I always say this, this is family, and so every every week with family, it's always different, right? They're each, so we get to, so tonight is, it's a new beginning. It's it's a new year, it's a new cycle, like, like Tony was saying, and I think you're going to find it really interesting. Recording in progress. <laughs> I thought I muted that. <laughs> You're going to find it really interesting how uh, what the what the new covenant portion has to say tonight. I don't know if you have read the, the new covenant portion for tonight. Michelle probably has, but you're not going to say anything yet. So you bring it out. <laughs> so, but let's just we're going to and and pray for Thomas. Thomas is not here obviously tonight. He's sick. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got some just respiratory issues and he's you know anyway he's struggling uh, so it's which is unusual I mean it's unusual for us to, to meet without Thomas so it's always different but it's, it's really but anyway um, but life goes on always we know that um, like and we're gonna have some different kinds of sharing tonight with people that have, that have had conversations with people from Israel, Janet's going to share. Um, Karen's going to share a little bit about her her family being in Israel, and and just it's just always interesting to see what God does every every day and how He leads us. Um, but let's just begin our usual way, and um, we're going to pray. Um, but you know, welcome to Shema Israel for those on Zoom. I think there's some different people on Zoom that I don't. Really Priscilla's actually on. Yep. Wow. So hi all over the world. Uh, all over the world and, um, anyway, so we were actually supposed to be in Vancouver tonight, but God directed us to stay here, you know, for a number of reasons. So, uh, well, we're blessed. No matter where you are, you know, God's leading you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, just like we said, He's leading you by the cloud by day and the fire by night. And really, that's what God wants for each of us. He wants us to hear His voice, and that's why we call ourselves Shema Israel, so we can hear His voice. Mm -hmm. And um, so, if any of you didn't get the Torah passage, you know, it's also online, uh, but it's nice to have a hard copy too. So, we've got more copies of this. And if you have friends that are, are Jewish or friends that are believers that don't know about, the Torah passage, you can give that to them. So let's just uh, begin. So Father God, tonight we, we come into your presence, thankful for your grace to us, thankful that you love us and care for us in a very special way. Lord, I just pray that you pour out your spirit upon us. Lord, this is a, a special night. This is your festival of Shabbat. Lord, we thank you for this festival. What a privilege it is to celebrate Shabbat and uh, that you promise that you're going to be with us, you're not going to forsake us, you're not going to leave us, yeah. and that you're going to take care of us, Lord. And so, but Lord, we, we worship you tonight in spirit and truth. Lord, we come against every evil force that tries to break us down. Yes. We know that you have come to give us life and life more abundantly. But Lord, we, we come against the enemy who tries to rob, kill, and destroy us. And we know that we cannot be destroyed in our soul because we have our life and, and we live our life in you. We, we tabernacle with you and you tabernacle with us and we're thankful for that, Lord. Thankful for your grace to us. So as we worship you in spirit and truth tonight, we just thank you and praise you for what you're going to do in our midst tonight. And just teach us, help us to understand your word more deeply, more fully that the deep in us would search for the deep in you, and that we would hear you and be called according to your voice, and you would say to us, here is the way, walk ye in it, and we would do that. So thank you, Lord, for that tonight. We ask these things in, in your precious name, the Lord our God, King of the universe, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. 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 So, what do we have the shofar? And, uh, I was ready for the shofar. <laughs> we hope.
Yeah, I'm going to ask if you, you took such wonderful pictures of Simcha Torah, and um, I would ask if, speaking of, let me back up, Priscilla sent a message today, um, and not just to us, but she said that her, her rabbi in Israel um, suggested that I, we light on Friday night, we light two candles, <coughs> one for us, us and one for Israel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to send a picture to Priscilla of us lighting the candles. We have a picture candle. We have extra candles. We have extra candles. But they said yet to do a specifier too. So Instead of the two, add an extra. Why would you add it? Well, you don't have four. That's it. Yeah. 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 You got, you just used the big one, just the center one. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. Stay there right on top. Oh, middle. okay. Yeah. 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 Should I put it in the middle? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There we go. Yes. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, beautiful. And that one can be for Israel. Yes. And you can still see it on the screen. That's what they're going to see. Unless you take a picture too. Oh, that's nice. Oh, with the yes. flag right yes. there too. That's excellent. How's that? Beautiful. Yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, just, can I just look for what's second? We'll put this on the other side. We'll have a totally balanced. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. And then we'll put it back. Okay. Oh. So you got me looking at the other one. Tell me where. Is that? It's framed. Uh, a little bit closer. Just scoot it. Shell. Push it towards start. the piano. Uh, so you know, line start. up better that way, anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah cool. Roger's going to turn on um, a melody Shmash. for Shabbat Shalom. Shmash. You want to do Shabbat Shalom? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.
Yeah. Which one do you want? And the words will be up there for the medley, but good. Don't we, we want the Shema is right? We want the Shema first, okay. Roger. Yes. Right. I forgot to do my <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can stand and place yeah. these. If you need the words, you can go to the screen now. Yeah, they're going to be on the screen. But they don't have them tonight. I know, nobody has them. I've got an old one, right and I've got an old one I can pull out because they want us to one. take that. Yeah. <laughs> Another old Everybody knew their test was coming, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the test was coming. They just didn't know when. <laughs> There's always going to be a test. Be ready for you don't know when the Lord will come. Well, that's the word for today. Almost. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Oh, you wanted that one instead of this one? That's Don't okay. Worry about it. Just oh, let okay. it go. Just let it go. It's okay. It's all okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'll tell Don, tell, tell Don, you're just fine without him. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> there. <laughs> I wouldn't tell him. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. We were desperate without him. Oh, it came out here. I need a glue. Or did it come out? It's a glue. I'm glue. Often desperate. <laughs> <laughs> So all of you know that we're back in back in Genesis again. So Genesis 1:1 as of tonight is the portion for this week. 
And I, I, yeah, I would encourage you to go to TorahPortions.org and listen to it. It'll read it to you, all those portions. If you just go, you've got a computer and the computer has you know, sound, it'll, it'll read to you the portion for the week. And the half tour portion is Samuel and, um, but let's have, um, we're gonna have some, there's really not a lot of announcements. The next event is, in terms of big events that we're going to do is, Hanukkah, which will be December 8th. So we're literally about eight weeks away from that is all. Uh, I know. It's like right around the corner. Eight weeks will just fly by, especially in the fall. It always does. And so we'll, um, we're hoping to have another big event in the family room. But of course, what's that? For Hanukkah. Yes. For Hanukkah, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. We did last year, too. We did? Uh -huh. We did last year. Last year was the first big event that we had. It was nice. We had about 100, 110 people. Well, I wonder, but I, for some reason I thought it was Rosh Hashanah, but it was for Hanukkah. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. No, it was, we did it really. Anyway. Okay. So Hanukkah was the first big event that we had, and Pastor Mark is going to get back to us. He's yeah, so take again. it to the board. So That's all you need to say. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so Roger's got some some music for us to enjoy, and Tony too. So who I don't know who wants to go first? Well, we Tony to go first. first. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. All right. So what what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna move sitting down. Okay. Good. Because. There's times where my knees hurt me very bad, so okay. And so uh, there's a couple of uh, just uh, uh, folk step that I'm going to teach you, and then some arm movements. So when you can't come out, and we're you know, if we can starting next week, if we can probably meet like about six o'clock, I'll start lessons. What I want to do is like uh, for a month. Do a dance. Then number two, do a, a teach you how to play the timbrel with the word, okay? And then uh, some musical. I can bring some drums too, and and djembe's, and so just to give us just a little variety of things. But for those that can't move, you can. We, we need to be able to praise together in unity. So that's what I'm going to teach you. So actually, just follow me, okay? Uh, what I will say is that this is a half circle, so if I go with my right hand, you go with your right hand. But if I was sitting here, okay, if I was sitting here and I went with my right hand, okay, you probably will go with you, your left hand. That's called mirroring, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do something together, and if I put your, your left hand, that's a mirror, okay? If you're actually going to follow me, you look at what hand I have open, which is what? Right. My right. Okay, so then that's what you do. When we're, when we're dancing in a circle, when we're dancing in a circle, okay, and we're moving clockwise, okay, which is this way, okay, and if you will look, if we're moving clockwise, okay, we're just left, you're gonna follow the person, don't look at the person across. If I'm the leader, don't look at me across. You wanna look at the person to your left because we're moving clockwise, okay? Otherwise, you'll get confused, okay? And I'm saying this because in the event that we bring some dancers or whatever, or we go someplace and we can be able to join, that's why I'm gonna teach you some very basic step. If we're going counterclockwise, you're gonna to look to the person on your right. So the one, usually how it is that, uh, and when you just join a, uh, uh, you go to a congregation, people kind of know where to put themselves, okay? Because uh, the, the ones that are with the, the, the leader, if she's leading, then the next one that can lead will be there. So people will always be able to find someone. And sometimes they'll put uh, another person who may know the dance or know the steps, put them across so that way people think she can be in the middle or he can be in the middle because it's good men too that are able to do that. So I just want to just kind of just teach you some very basic things so this way you'll have an understanding of that and so you don't get confused and it'll make you want to be able to to dance and to move okay so 
the, uh, I uh, picked uh, this song, uh, and it's it's Hava Nigiga Hava, but it's slow. It's a slower one, and it does pick up. But what I want us to do is that uh, we can just just focus on our worship, okay? Because you know we're we're you may not consider you a worshiper, but we all are worshippers. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the balance of a worshiper, the first one is, is that you have to have some choreography. You have to have a plan. What was your plan coming in tonight? Okay. The, God's plan is John 3.16. He had a plan. For God so loved the world. That's the, that's the first choreography okay, that was there. Then the, the, the other one is moving spontaneously. That is the joy realm. Okay, that you'll be able to just move because what's in you and what he has done. Okay? And the third realm is the prophetic realm, and that's the peace realm. So you can't really go into the prophetic realm if you don't have a plan to study the Word of God, to be able to follow the Holy Spirit. You cannot, and that kind of goes along with what some of the questions that he was asking about, uh, how could you tell about a false, a false prophet? That's something that we don't want to do because we're going to be in that prophetic realm. This is now. This is it. Read Zephaniah 1, 2, and 3, and it just tells you right now. Uh, uh, so when, when, when you have somebody, you know, the little uh, excerpts that you're going to have, okay, I want to talk about a boy that is three years old in Israel right now and what he said, okay? So here we go. Are we all ready to praise God and... Mm -hmm. It's not about someone else. What I'm doing is to release it in you. Okay? Release it in you. Thank you. 
if there's too cold. Well, huh? just we always kept it cold for Thomas though. So. <laughs> I can turn I can turn the temperature. Are we still having yeah. Melody and Melody? <laughs> <laughs> we missed or the Shabbat Melody. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have more music if you want. Well, can we have Karen? 
Oh, sure. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. And then, I, and then we can have some music, and then you'll be Oh, okay. Yeah, I, absolutely can. Oh, me? Yes. Now. Okay. Uh, here, here, here. All right. Um, I was asked to say a few words about my um, younger sister's trip to Israel. And she has been in, well, she's been a Torah follower. Now, I would say, well, we've, we've called ourselves kind of following the word of God um, all our lives. My father was a minister and her husband's family was in ministry as well, but um, I guess it was maybe about 10 years ago that their interdenominational Christian group invited them to take their Jewishness elsewhere um, as, they, as, they, as they phrased it. Um, the more that they were studying the roots of the faith, um, it took them to places that made their Christian congregation very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so they, they've been accused yeah. of turning into Jews, yeah. as yeah. if that's a bad thing. Um, <laughs> 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 until finally, and my sister is, is, is a worshiper. She's a worship leader in her church. And so they were all invited to go take that somewhere else. And um, they, um, as they were looking for how to express what they were learning about uh, our connection um, with our, 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 our roots, they, they, um, the roots of the faith. Um, they um, found themselves in a messianic uh, congregation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it connected for them in ways that uh, were surprising and, um, and in ways that were not really very well understood by the folks who consider themselves quote unquote Christians. Um, believing people, but very much um, kind of a division. Old Testament's for the Jewish people, and we read it because it's interesting, and it tells great stories, but you know, the New Testament's for us Christians, and anyway. Um, so they were, in, they were in this, raising five children um, in the Midwest, I and- um, right. They were in Iowa, right? They were originally oh. in Minnesota. Oh. I think that's still Midwest, right? It is, it is. No, okay. it is. You're right. All right. Um, <laughs> and uh, they moved to Iowa only, really only recently, but okay. um, they decided that if they were going to be Torah observant, they needed to learn a little bit more about that. They, that, that brought them to Messianic communities. And, um, and then they really felt very strongly the call to um, follow the injunctions um, that they were discovering in the Bible to uh, to go to Israel for the feasts, um, and um, my sister, the way she phrased it was that you know these are the feasts that the Lord has uh, designated that He yeah. wants His yes. people to celebrate. Mm -hmm. um, you can look and look and look in the Bible, but you'll never find anything about Christmas or Easter. Yes, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, but you do Not find enough. all kinds of things about the feast days right. um, and how we are to observe them. So they felt very strongly that they wanted to pursue that, and that led them to Israel mm -hmm. um, about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they made the first trip. It's been almost been almost 10 years. I think they made the first trip in 2014. Um, and so during the pandemic, um, uh, they felt very strongly in, uh, about not getting vaccinated, so they could not go to Israel um, when it was closed. People could not establish that they had, they had been um, vaccinated, so they were away for a couple of years. But um, this year, they could go back. Um, and so they're very excited. Um, they had been going, um, my sister and her husband, and uh, a few of uh, the, the daughters um, had, had traveled to, to Israel and had an eye-opening time. Um, you know, they connected with um, uh, both Messianic and Jewish communities in Israel, and they explained why they were there. And um, it sounds like they just have had a revelatory time. It would take my sister actually and her husband to actually tell you all about that. But she has posted extensively on Facebook 
Um, but this year they were really excited because both of their sons and one of their son-in-laws um, decided to make the trip. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that the oldest son had gone to, to, to Israel. The younger son had gone um, when they went, but um, it was the first time for the oldest son and of course the first time for the son-in-law. Mm -hmm. And so they were very excited and they were having a marvelous time. Um, had been in the Negev, N N Negev yes. and um, they were hiking and traveling and you know, telling each other the stories of the history and it was wonderful and uh, the older son was um, saying that oh the hike was kind of strenuous and oh my goodness you know it was like I, I might fall down um, and he was really worried about that and then he said well look the even the skydivers look like they're skydiving in body bags, you know, kind of anticipating that they would fall or something, not knowing that those were more than likely the Hamas militants that were skydiving their way in um, along, along, along that border. And so um, she said she didn't even, you know, she, the son was joking and she heard him, you know, kind of joking about it. She said she didn't even look up, but in retrospect, um, when the assault happened, either the next day or the day after, they were back in Jerusalem, and the sirens were going off, and they're, you know, they're hearing all of this. And then as the news kind of develops of what's happening, you know, she thought about the fact that they had probably seen some of the folks that were coming in to uh, so absolute chaos um, and parachuting over the border um, to get in and um, and just you know create this horrific assault and so um, this was happening this happened I mean the assault happened of course um, on the day that was supposed to be the day of rejoicing this is you know this is supposed to be a day of Thanksgiving and happiness and it has turned into the horror that we, that we see on, on television. So there they were, and, um, and here we were in the U.S. And of course everybody knew that they were traveling because my sister had posted extensively about her trip and she was so excited. Um, and here they were now caught with a lot of other people who had come for the, 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 the Holy Day um, and wondering you know, what's going to happen. Uh, and whether they were going to be able to get out. Yeah. So the, the, the timing worked out for them. They were scheduled to leave the following day mm -hmm. of the assault, and the airport was still open. Mm -hmm. um, so they got up earlier than, um, than they would have normally done. They, they had a midnight flight. They were there 12 hours in advance um, mm -hmm. and waiting at the airport. And the crush of people also coming to the airport mm -hmm. trying to get out mm -hmm. um, was just unimaginable. I got a, like a six second clip of um, the crowd that they met at the airport and it looked like all the nations were there and scrambling trying to find out if their flights were leaving um, and uh, their flight was and so they um, were able to leave on time and uh, no change in their routing, but they got to, uh, I think they went through Dubai and they were flying Arab Emirates oh. airline. Mm -hmm. So they stopped in Dubai and then were able to, to proceed um, to the U.S. But major U.S. carriers had stopped flying. Wow. If they had been flying on a U.S. carrier, it, would, it might have been a little mm -hmm. more iffy mm -hmm. whether or not they were, they were actually um, going to make it out or not. So they got back to the U.S. on time, on schedule, as, as they had planned. Um, and since they've been back, she's, um, she's posted uh, a lot um, because over the years of, of, of going to Israel, and meeting people in Jerusalem. She's got connections in both the Messianic community and the Orthodox community, and has heard you know, some horrific stories about uh, the attacks and um, you know, just um, people who have relatives that 
are missing, um, or who have friends who had kids who were uh, young people who were at the festival in the desert. I forget what they call it. Something in the desert, dancing in the desert, or something that they were that they were um, that they were doing, and they had a big rock concert that they were going that they had in the desert. And you've seen on if you've watched any of the of the news reporting, these people running and hiding, um, trying to hide under cars and behind bushes and being there you know, for hours, uh, not knowing whether or not these, little, these, these terrorists were going to find them. And, yeah. um, and the people they were finding, they were just, they were shooting, yeah, they basically. Were they were shooting and you know, uh, there are, you know, now the, the story is coming out with images of just the horrific brutality mm. of um, what has gone on on the ground and um, just just terrible and we probably have not yet heard all of the right. the worst of what uh, was visited on people but um, they are praying and uh, friends are praying and of course we are all praying uh, we haven't stopped since family got home um, because a lot of people there are still waiting to hear from loved ones yeah. mm -hmm. you know, they don't know if um, their family members, if they're going to hear from them again, see them again. Um, there have been horrific threats um, against the, the people that were captured and um, taken into uh, Gaza. And um, it's just, you know, it's it's time for praying people to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my cousin. Mm -hmm. Can you speak louder, please? <laughs> I didn't think I was that quiet. You're quiet. I spoke to my cousin in Israel on Sunday, mm -hmm. I called him. Um, he's been, lived in Israel all his life. And um, he had a few things to say, mm -hmm. which I've come to understand differently recently. But um, he said, we knew this was coming. We just didn't expect it so soon. Right. And uh, he did say, it's the worst since 1948. Right. And um, he said, we, we will survive, but we'll never be the same. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I see some parallels, not completely, because the United States is not a country where you know, people have pounded us since our inception and challenged our, our existence. But you know, there there were comparisons to 9/11, and I think that in the in the sense of the shock and surprise. Um, that there may be some similarities, um, but also, you know, the the anger um, that this kind of attack from seemingly nowhere and then everywhere um, that to me seems to be somewhat similar. And so, I feel very strongly that you know we we need to pray um, because. In a similar way, um, people are rightfully feeling aggrieved and very raw. And it may be easy for those feelings to be exploited in ways that we never intended them to be. Um, and so um, it's just, I think that. Prayer is always a, a, a an appropriate response when our hearts are overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and this is certainly an occasion um, in which our hearts will be overwhelmed, and mm -hmm. um, and our sensibilities will be challenged by what we see and hear um, emerging from 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 this. From this situation, Rochelle. Did, 
Yeah. It's a war. It oh, yeah. War. It's a war. It, it, it is, is a war. war, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, this is three things that I want to say. Uh, as you know, that I'm uh, involved in another ministry, and so we were called, and I'm one of the, the, the leaders there, and we were called to do a three-day prayer and fast, in which we have, and then, so all since that has happened, I've been very, very in tune, okay? Well, Wednesday, uh, usually we have five o'clock prayer, and Wednesday, uh, the pastor, uh, Michelle Carell, she says, I don't do uh, the media, okay? She has her daughter set her up and all that, but her daughter sent her this from Israel, mm -hmm. and it was a three-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. He's saying, Teshuvah, Teshuvah. And the mother says, who told you to sing that? He's three years old, remember? Mm -hmm. Hasham. Hasham said, Teshuvah, Teshuvah. Out of the mouth of babes. Mm -hmm. That was Wednesday in the morning. I go to service that night. And we're coming back. And you know Mitzi. She's one of and Cecilia. We drive together. Mm -hmm. I was the driver. And as we're coming back, Mitzi says, what is that? And we're in Pomona because the, the freeways, we had to take another route. So we're in Pomona and there's an airplane just hovering. Mm -hmm. okay. Really? Yes. And she says, what's that? I go, well, I'm driving, look it up, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so she does, and it says that, uh, yes, uh, that they, how can the plane stay up there, okay? <laughs> and it says that they, they turn off the engines, but there's another uh, uh, device that they have that keeps them afloat. So now we're going to Montclair. There's another plane just there. Now we get to Fontana. There's another plane just in mid-air. Mm -hmm. Now we get to Beaumont, and there's the port mm -hmm. in Beaumont. Fire. Huh? Fire. No, I uh, tell what does it look like? You know, I'm trying to see because uh, Wednesday, <laughs> you know, it was a lot of storm. I right. mean, you couldn't even see the mountains. Dust. Right. Yes. Dust, dust. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I says, so she said, well, it kind of looks like a commercial plane. I says, well, maybe because L.A. could have been so just yeah. indebted that they have to come to Palm Springs, they have to go to Ontario. Look it up. So she's supposed to let me know tonight what really happened. She was going to, okay. So that is the uh, uh, second thing. What I want to say is that I live in a community that there are Christians there. But when I, they says, gee, Tony, we haven't seen you. I says, I'm doing a shut-in. You're doing what? A shut-in. Oh. Okay. I says, haven't you been watching the news? Uh, well, these are these are Christians. Yeah. I had to get bold to say that these are end times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read Zephaniah 1, 2, and 3. It says right there. Right there. But no, it's a warning. We have a warning. And I told her. I love you, but I'm giving you a warning now. You've got to read the word of God so you will know. Zephaniah talks about he's warning the people of Israel. Then in two, it tells that they're crying out. He's hearing them. And Zephaniah three, because they cried out sincerely, the promises are restored. So what I say, let us not be a congregation here that, you know what, we're just going and just doing things right. and not really paying attention <laughs> to really what's going on. Mm -hmm. Really what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to say. So I, I would just like to say that for me, I, I know that this is a time from this point forward that we really have to be diligent and really be vigilant as well and to watch and to see and to pay attention. I don't have anything specific, but really that's the message that I've been getting in the last 24 hours. And you know, to some degree I was concerned about, and some people, other people were concerned about even coming tonight because of the, the holy war that's been declared uh, as well, because they're, you know, we know that they have declared war on us as well, as Christians and Jews, the, the whole radical sector of 
Islam, which is really not probably it's the radical sector because they want to they want to kill us. They want to kill all of us, and that's really what's going on. So, and I don't know if you noticed, but uh, tonight Al, who's head of security for Desert Springs, is also concerned about us, and they even asked if we wanted to meet tonight. And I felt like, you know, we wanted to meet so we can, you know, this is kind of family time tonight to pray together. And, you know, some people, you know, but to me, the Word of God tells us, fear not. And always it says, fear not. It doesn't say, and we, we need to pray, but we also need to study. And we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, which means this is a different era. And this is a different time. And... We don't want to be lulled to sleep either. And, but um, the interesting thing is of the the, the Brit Hadashah portion, the New Covenant portion, is from Matthew 24. And look, if you don't know what it says, the final part of that is actually, um, you know, it's, it goes forth and it says that, um, really something that I've said before, but kind of in, in advance, that we know that um, we don't know, we're not going to know the day or the hour. And even the, even the Son doesn't know. Even Yeshua, Jesus doesn't know the day or the hour. But only the Father knows. And so it's something that, that's the Torah portion, the Brit HaShah part of the Torah portion for tonight. So that's, if you look at Matthew 24, um, 24, 29 to 36. That's what it's about. So, um, and I thought it was interesting that that's the Torah portion for this week and starting tonight. So, um, but I, but he does want to tell us. I mean, he we know that the signs of the fig tree. We know that you know when summer is coming. Um, you know, and you know throughout history we've looked at this that this this is. To me, a different time. I don't really want to say that I know when, because we don't. I mean, but we do know. We do know we're supposed to pay attention and and to pray without ceasing and to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's the only city it ever mentions in Scripture to pray for. Is this pay for the peace of Jerusalem? And obviously, there's a reason for that. So, I, I just yeah. wanted to say one more thing. Louder. I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, Pastor Mark, and, and I'm really not the one that should say it, but he Pastor said. Mark did call you. Right. Um, he, perhaps you would like to Yeah, he, he called uh, a couple of times and said, you know, we're praying for you, we're behind you, we're supporting you, and we, Jan, and both of us, and supporting Israel, both of us have had lots of calls from lots of people that know that we, we love Israel. They're saying we stand with you and with Israel. And but Pastor Mark also called. Pastor, right. Pastor Mark also, what Janet wanted me to remember to say, was they also called like three rabbis and called and talked to them personally. And said we as a, as a multitude of con congregations are supporting you as God's people here in the desert. And that's something that I thought was you know, amazing, and really the Holy Spirit led him to do that, and, and I know that's true, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that we're here, uh, and I, what I've said is, I mean, our, we're always, to some degree, we as Christians don't see it as much as Jews do, but Jewish people know that they're always at risk. They've lived, they've lived their whole history for, for generations upon generations knowing that they're at risk. And uh, Janet, Janet has kind of an intuitive sense, and um, I'm not saying the reason we didn't go to Vancouver is because of this, but at some level, um, I think somehow God wanted, appointed us to be here rather than in Vancouver. Yes. And do I understand all the dynamics of that? No, but sometimes you just go with what God tells you, like Tony was saying, in your, in your gut, in your your sense of who you are, God speaks to you inside of you, because he does. He, because he lives in us, and we live and move and have our being in him, he 
He speaks to us, and sometimes we go, oh, wow, check, I've got to pay attention. So, and that's what God wants for each of us to learn how to do so that we can be together. Um, well, well, coming home, I asked Mitzi, because they've been here for 30 years, you know, they've been here for a while. 34. So, yeah, okay. So what's here? Is there a mosque here? She says, oh, yeah, there's so a mosque in, 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 in India. And she says, and you know there's a lot of Jews there. I says, okay, because it just need to, we need to be watchful. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, about uh, 13 or 14 years ago, I was asked to go to, to Oregon and to teach. Mm -hmm. And that was my first uh, camp because we stayed the whole week. And that was my whole, uh, my first with Messianic, and there were rabbis there, okay? But I was looking for the book so I can bring, but one of the rabbis there, he's an author of three books, and one of his book was, Where's America in the End Times? Mm -hmm. We're not mentioned. Right. We're not mentioned. So I say this to say that we have to be careful. Right because we're not mentioned. Hopefully he'll take us before then, but we're not mentioned. So I said, even today, Lord, where's the book? And he says, well, you let Pastor Carlos <laughs> in Walnut, okay? So now I gotta call Pastor because I need to rekindle that so it'll be fresh in me as to that needs to be said because everybody thinks that we're safe and it ain't gonna happen if you've been watching the news, you know, I, I, I was, Floored at seeing Times Square today. Yeah. I, I just said, Lord, it can happen anytime. Yeah. The borders are open. Right. So, yes, pray and be watchful is the word. And also, one last thing, please. Um, oh. I think we need to talk about, discuss, and decide how we would like to give to Israel to support. Um, because uh, one of our our family, I, I mean, I, I say that we say, um, in Kansas, she said, she te I, I think you all saw that. Mm -hmm. she, she wants to give to some organization that's boots on the ground in Israel um, to, to support. And I told her that we would discuss it and just and make, talk about some options and see what we want to do as a congregation, how we would like to um, send support. I also would like to say that because as I was in prayer yesterday, was saying, Father, those that are able to leave, do they have a place to go if they can leave? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so is there any association any type of group that we can connect with because I got two rooms mm -hmm. that somebody could come in as long as they're over 55, 55 <laughs> and over. but you know I would be willing to do that I would feel that it was an honor to be able to house somebody mm -hmm. that didn't have but they have the money to get out mm -hmm. that's what I say along with what you will discover is that I would like to see about that mm -hmm. and Priscilla <clears throat> You know, that's why I, met, I told you what Priscilla suggested. <clears throat> but he, the person she was referring to, his name is David, and I can't, I never pronounce his name, last name correct, Nakru Rudiman. He, he wrote the <laughs> Sabbath invitation. Your book Sabbath that we invitation. About it, there's, uh, I, just what I want to tell you is the Isaiah Project. And they are really boots on the ground because they, <clears throat> They're from Israel. There's so many. There's so many projects, and it really it's hard for us to, yes. to really know. So we're praying for discernment and understanding. And in, it's not like you have to join. And typically, we don't talk about money at all. And we're not making an appeal at all. Yeah. We're just saying we want you to pray as we think together, and we're open to hearing what yeah. uh, and Michelle might have some input too yeah. as well and uh, everybody has kind of their Janet Harris sent a name of somebody that she's there you're, you can do what what you would like and it's not like you have to do anything it's really but I think it's it's imperative that we 
that we do something. So that's really, anyway. So. Michelle. <laughs> I'm trying to figure how to do our evening. It's 8.15. <laughs> <laughs> And just staying on topic right now, I can say that some of you have met Tom and Jeannie Bono, my yes. personal, they're, they might as well be family, who are not by blood, but we've been together for years. They're making their 29th trip into Israel. They are leaving this Sunday. They still have their, this Sunday, two days, Sunday. not tomorrow, but right. Sunday. Yeah. They're with their, in Israel it is, but when they're leaving I, I from LA, I, I, it's two days. <laughs> oh, they're leaving in 36 hours. How's that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, they go in and they live among the Israelis. They have connections that they've made through the years. Um, they support different projects as the Lord leads them. They go in with whatever the Lord's given them financially from others. That they distribute as they're there. So. They know exactly where the money is going. They know exactly what they are doing with it. Um, they cannot get everywhere that they usually go, obviously. But um, El Al did confirm that their flight is still going and their seats are still available to them. Why I say that is um, initially the El Al planes continued to fly, mm -hmm. but they were filled with all the reservists getting back. Mm -hmm. And for all of you who bought the lie that Israel was a divided country, mm -hmm. that the reservists said they wouldn't show up for duty if they were called up, and all of that rhetoric that you heard in the last month, six weeks and longer, I just want to speak against it, and I want people to realize don't take everything you hear right. and say, oh, that's what's going on. I was a very lone voice in the wilderness saying, no, I know Israel. I know if, if they are attacked, every single reservist will that. be there. Mm -hmm. Now, if I could tell you what some of these kids went through to get back to their unit, to fly into the face of danger, mm -hmm. yes, they did. They took mm -hmm. any means of mm -hmm. transportation they could find. They took flights that got them partway to pick up another flight to get further. Mm -hmm. And they went in, and they are in, and I'm sidetracked. But my point is, Tom and Jeannie put it before the Lord. Should we go? Their heart was there, but is it the right and the wise thing to go? And they came away saying that they felt from the Lord if the plane stayed open to them, that's their indication there to go. So they will know for a fact Sunday morning when they arrive and the flight goes. Um, they go with suitcases jammed full of, of um, things to give that are helpful for the people. And then, as I said, they live among them. Um, all the people that we've met through them, amazingly, I stand here, again, a very lone voice that gets to say, so far everyone we know has survived. Mm -hmm. I think that's a rare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I stand in awe that I can say that. I just stand in awe because so many can't say that. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll be going to try to make connections with these people. Uh, four of them live in Center Road, which no longer exists. Mm -hmm. These are people that are displaced. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're going to be doing, but I do know that this is another amazing thing of Israel. And this is what Israel does. When they needed to flee from the north, the south opened up their homes and families took families in, no questions asked, and didn't have connections, didn't know each other, they just came together and lived together. Mm -hmm. And now the north is repaying and is opening their homes. Mm -hmm. They're in Jerusalem right now, I don't know how long or where, but I can tell you that probably some of what you would give would go for people like that if you want to support Tom and Jeannie. Uh, I can connect with them at any time. Uh, through their daughter that is here so that you don't have to give tonight. And they're going to be there for a month. They come back on November 16th. So during that time, if the Lord leads you and you want, I can make a direct connection to their bank account that will go directly there. There's no overhead. Tom and Jeannie don't take anything for themselves. That's not how they do it. So I can present that to you. Um, it's a different country. It's a different time. We can't tell you specifics, but uh, El Al even, for the first time in its history, over 40 years of history, they will fly on the Shabbat because they're getting people in and out, sadly. And so they're, they're setting aside 
what they believe is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, yes. What did the airlines say to Tom and Jeannie? The airlines thanked Tom and Jeannie. They were on hold for two hours to find out if they still had a flight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always hard to talk to all off, but this was the extreme. And when they finally you know, talked to them and made it very clear, we're not citizens of Israel. We have the seats, we've had the seats, but we don't know if we need to give them up to Israeli citizens. We don't know, you know. Uh, where it stands, and that's when they said at this point, most of the reservists have made it back. The planes aren't jammed with the reservists, and, and if that isn't a beautiful scene to see too. When uh, somebody brought up the song tonight, and I can't even think of it, Hatikva. There's a the plane load of kids, 18, 20 year old kids, flying back to Israel. And when they landed on the tarmac, mm -hmm. and they stood out there getting their assignments to go because they're meeting them right there and sending them out, they stood in a group and they sang the Hatika, mm -hmm. and then they went. That's our people. Mm -hmm. That's the resilience of our people. Yes. Uh, but they they told Tom and Jeannie that they cannot begin to thank them for caring and for expressing that love and for coming. Uh, they have connections all over. They'll go wherever the Lord lets them go, and they'll mm -hmm. do what they can. But I do ask you, what we covet the most is prayer, yes. absolutely prayer. Um, and a time that they can share why they're there, the love of the Lord, with people who are crying out right now. Mm -hmm. When there is not peace, people are looking for peace. We know, we, we know the only one is the Prince of Peace, and the only peace that will come to Israel is through Messiah. When um, Bruce brought up Matthew 24, for any who aren't clear on it, haven't read it and don't know, I don't know if your thoughts were completely clear, but it's referring to the time, the end time, when Messiah will return. And I make that very clear. It's his second coming. It's not his first coming, and it's not his calling us up in air. That's not a second coming. That's in the air. But he will come and put his feet on the Mount of Olives again. And he will stop the battle that if he did not stop it, he said there wouldn't be flesh left alive. Today we can begin to understand how that could happen. The countries that are behind the scene right now that are supporting Hamas, Hezbollah, Hunis, and all the rest are the countries that you are hearing. They are not innocent. I'm not here to go political, but just to say, if you want to know what's going on, open your Bible. And read Ezekiel 38, 39, read Daniel 11, and read the book of Revelation. The countries that are involved today are the countries that will be involved at the end of that battle. So I find it not surprising that they're lining up in the way they are lining up now. To leave you on a good note, go ahead. The sons of Ishmael are those the ones who are the enemy? Well, out of Ishmael came Arab population. Out of uh, Esau comes Edom, and Edom is a lot of the Arab nations. I'm not going to say that just because they're Arab, they're the enemy. That's not true. There are so many Israeli Arabs living side by side with Israeli Jews who have also lost their lives in this. So I'm not going to wipe out a whole people the way they're wanting to wipe out me. I'm not going to go there. Uh, but there is enmity between the, the cousins mm -hmm. and their cousins that goes all the way back to what God said that this is what would be. Even he told Rivka when she had the twins in her womb that were fighting each other in the womb that this would be, it would be two nations and more than that, but that would battle each other. But what I want to say, because I don't want to leave it on that note for any who don't know prophecy, God has told us, he's given us a roadmap that is very clear. The book of Revelation lays it out very clearly. There is a time that it starts with a false peace treaty. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to look really good to Israel. It's going to look like they finally have a partner for peace. If in that Arab world that is stirred up in such hatred and violence right now, if one would step forward, who could unite those people and put out a hand to shake a hand with Israel? Ask me what family in Israel who doesn't have a, a burial going on right now 
or those in the hospital who won't be willing to say, you know what, we'll try this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want it that badly. We'll try this. Easily that could step onto the scene. And if it is, it is the one who is called the Antichrist because he is against Messiah. Mm -hmm. He is not a Jew and he is not true. Chris, you asked what a false prophet is. He is the biggest false prophet that will ever be on the face of this earth, apart from Satan himself, who has also so been. How do you identify? By the scriptures. The scriptures will tell. I fully believe, and I can't get into it at 825, but I fully believe that we who are believers are caught up before the tribulation period starts. That's an hour, hour and a half teaching that I can give you and we'll be glad to give you backing up what I'm saying with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But we need to be able to tell others what's going to be going on who are not believers, who are not listening to us, who might listen after we disappear and need to know where to go, where to turn in the scriptures to know what to do. That false peace treaty is between Israel and the Arabs. It's not worldwide. In the beginning of the tribulation period, the first half is not a cakewalk for everybody who thinks, oh, it doesn't matter if we're here in the beginning, it's, it's, that's going to be over there, or it's not going to be that bad. No, it's a horrible time. At the peak point, that midpoint, when God's wrath is also poured out on a world that is so full of sin that God's judgment has to fall because he is holy and he cannot wink at sin, and he finally has that enough is enough, mm -hmm. then that peace treaty is broken. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the Jews who are still in Israel, if they do not flee and hide, they will not be alive. We see the rumblings of what's happening right now. We saw how hard it was for the people to get away now. Mm -hmm. And God even says in Matthew 24, pray that this doesn't happen on the Shabbat so that there isn't transportation. Pray it doesn't happen in the winter when there's snow on the ground. Pray that you're not a nursing mother at that time because you can't move fast. This makes all that very real. But God has this plan that is being unfolded. It is not his plan for evil. His plan is to conquer that evil. Evil is what man has brought on himself because he chose to go against God and God's plan. And as they go through this time, Israel will finally come to the point where she will look up and will cry out to her God and he will raise up. Even as he raised up Moshe and brought them out of Egypt, he will raise up. He will come back himself. He will stop the battle and he will put an end to the, the enemies of Israel. And she will then be lifted up in that position that God wanted her in to be a head nation where the other nations come up to worship the Lord and go back west because that is God's plan. I'm here to tell you nothing has derailed God's plan. I'm here to tell you that what is happening is unfolding and playing into God's hand. That Satan thinks he's got it and he's dancing and he thinks he's winning and he is going to go down literally in a blaze of fire in the end. But this is a time for us to speak out and to share with Israel to do what the pastor did, to contact. We have two rabbis that were involved with, Chula Vista is one, <coughs> last night had a prayer vigil, and I am so thankful to say I couldn't be there because I was out of town and could not make the connection, but I am so thankful to tell you their little temple, and it's little, was overrun by over 300 people. Mm -hmm. It was overrun by Christians mm -hmm. as well as the Jewish community. The mayor showed up mm -hmm. and they're standing in solidarity. Mm -hmm. And that little community is hearing from people like you mm -hmm. that they don't understand. They'll ask Tom and Jeannie. They'll tell them, you're mashukana. up. You're crazy for coming. Why are you here? And Tom and Jeannie will answer because we love Israel. Our Messiah is, or our Savior is your Messiah. Your scriptures are our Bible. Your God Amen. is our God. And it breaks down barriers when we can show tangibly that love. So, yes, tell your Jewish neighbors and friends speak out, speak up, and when the lies that are coming out, speak against them. Some of the lies I heard today so sickened me. I could not believe what I was hearing. Mm -hmm. 
but that's what Satan has done from the garden. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. alive, mm -hmm. and he puts Sorry. out the lies. And our place today is to pray, to stand with Israel, stand with her in prayer, and stand with her in any way that God directs you, whether that's financially, whether that's however, opening a home, you know, however. But uh, uh, these are just some of the, the thoughts that were running through my mind as I was hearing what everyone was saying. We're told in scripture, and I had chosen some psalms for us, I don't know what we're going to do with that, but I backed them up with uh, scripture. And we're told, be anxious for nothing. That's been hard this week. Yes. I had a long period of time when we weren't hearing from the people we knew. And the fear that wanted to grip me, safe in America, about what's happening to these people that I care about. The horror stories that were coming out that I will not delve into. How can you be anxious for nothing? There's only one way. You have got to run into your strong tower. You have got to get into your place with the Lord where you open up his word and he speaks to you and he speaks peace to your soul. And you hear words that suddenly mean a whole lot more than they did yesterday. It's telling Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This is what we want to tell our Israeli friends. I called, called up one on WhatsApp, got to talk with him, found out he was safe, was thrilled. But you know what? He's a believer. And the resiliency in him lifted my spirit. He was speaking to me from their bomb shelter. Yes. And he lifted my spirit. <laughs> That's my God. And he said, Rochelle, he's our, our refuge. He's our strength. He's our help in time of trouble. It goes on and it says, though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, those waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its selling, swelling, sorry, pride, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. What a contrast. Israel right now it feels like the mountains are sliding into the sea. And yet here is, as it goes on, the holy dwelling place of the Most High, of El El Yom. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. Israel, you will not be swept into the Mediterranean. You will not end. God has promised. God will help her with morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice, and the earth melted. Adonai Sabaot. That's the Lord of hosts, the heavenly hosts and the earthly armies. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Yaakov, of Jacob, is our stronghold. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has brought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow. He cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving. We hear those words? Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Adonai Sabaot, the Lord of the host, is with us. The God of Yaakov is our stronghold. Do you feel the peace that's starting to come over you? Mm -hmm. As we turn from talking about the atrocities and the war and the fear and the unknown, and we feast on the word of God. God has promised. I can take you to so many scriptures right now. I'm looking for the reference. I left the reference out of this one, but it's let God arise. Let our enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee from his presence. Drive them away as smoke is driven away, like wax melting in the presence of a fire. Let the wicked perish in the presence of God. Let the righteous rejoice and be glad in God's presence. Yes, let them exult and rejoice. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on clouds, whose name, Yah, the shortened form of Jehovah, and be glad in his presence. This also touches, and that's from Mishayahu, Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake, O Zion. Let's awake, O Israel. Clothe yourself with your strength. 
dress in your splendid garments, Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean will enter you no more. There will not be a tax like this in the millennial reign of our God on this earth. And I want to cry out to my dear brethren, open your heart to know the Messiah who can give you peace now and who will bring you through and you will see the salvation of your nation. It's not this moment that everything I'm saying is imminent and could start happening right now. It could be very, very soon that we see all of this unfold as given to us in the Word of God. And our refuge, our strength, and our hope, we come under the shadow of His wing. Read telling Psalm 91 tonight. You're in the shelter of the Most High God. He's your refuge. He's your fortress. Your God in whom you trust. This is where the peace of God comes. This is where the answer is for Israel. I can't promise Israel that there's not going to be an attack. But I can promise Israel, your God is with you. Your God is fighting for you. Your God will bring you through and give them a hope in the word of God. Not a false hope and not a lie. This is the truth in the word of God. So our, our God reigns. Our God is in control. Do we understand every detail? No. No, we do not. My prayer is in this upheaval that more will turn to God, find the gift of their salvation, than will die in the, in the war and all that has taken place. And I can have that hope that that's literally what God is doing because many people are complacent until they're in a time of need. And this is a time of need. So uh, I don't know where we want to take it. It's 25 to 9. I don't know if you want music. I don't know what you want to do with it, but uh, what direction to go in at this point. Well, why don't you just, um, you have a few more things you want to share, right? Sure, I can. I can. Um, I mean, I, I love the worship part, too, but I, I feel the more need for it to be able to rather right spend now. time in, in prayer and um, that would be a good way for us to go out at the end tonight right. would be in a time of prayer for right. Israel yes right. I think, yes I was thinking that also I think this is a time for cleansing of what all the things that were happening bad in um, in Israel you know because I, every time I was looking you know I watch an Israeli channel and it's supposed to be like the kingdom where lesbians and gays were, you know, settling in, you know, using that city. And maybe with all this that started today, they're going to run out of there, you know, so when, you know, Jehovah uh, start, you know, doing his work, you know, it's not going to be no more like that, you know. That's what the final conclusion will come yes. to be, yes. yes. And I love my Israel. I love her. My heart is in Israel, even when my feet are in the United States. But I cannot condone all that Israel does. We all know that. They're not right before God, and they're not living righteously. And when they say, well, how can God allow this? I think the best description that I have heard is... When you go out and it's raining and you stay under the umbrella, you are safe and you are dry. But if you take yourself out from under the umbrella, whose fault is it if you get wet? <laughs> Israel, my beloved, you've taken yourself out from yes, under yes. the umbrella of God's protection. God cannot protect and condone what is wrong. So the, the, the consequences do fall sadly. The innocent get caught in it, and it, it's not God's choice either. His will and His way is was from the garden was a beautiful surrounding. We go back to the very beginning, and that's where I was going to go tonight. And it, it's, my heart's so torn because I cannot do this message in ten minutes and do it justice. <laughs> no. So I don't know what to do. I don't know whether just to park the whole thing for next week. Yes, but, probably. Okay, but let me give you a couple of highlights. Let me yes. just bring yes. your focus because remember we 
I'll have rolled back the scroll. We connected the two. And if you remember, I showed you how the last word was Israel. The last letter was the Lamed. The first letter was the Beit, which is also the Beit. The, the B or the V, they're almost simultaneous, uh, I mean, interchangeable. Uh, but we saw from connecting the Lamed and the Beit that we had love, that we had the heart, the heart that loves. We saw as Messianics, we looked to the end to Revelation, and we saw it was the new. And when we put the ben, the b, and the, I'm sorry, the bait and the noon together, we saw ben, which is the sun. We said that's the heart of God is the sun. The bait is the house. God wants us in his house. He made the way and the provision through his son. I was asked last week, and I won't bear someone who asked me, but I said I'd come back with the answer. At the end of the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures where they stop, what's the last word there? That's Second Chronicles, what's the last chapter, 34? I should have kept the reference. I didn't keep the reference. Bruce is looking quickly for me how many chapters. It's either 34 or 36. I think it's 34. Anyway, 36. 36. I stand corrected. And then it's verse 23. My mind's jumping in. Um, I take you to that, not to Malachi, not to Malachi, because the Tanakh is our Genesis to Malachi, as you say in your English. But it's in a different order. It's the same content, but it's in a different order. So I took it from the Jewish order, which means that Second Chronicles 36:23 is the last. And that word there is uh, is a little hard for me to pronounce, and I don't know that my pronunciation is accurate. I'm looking for where I phonetically put it. You you I don't know the Hebrew, but in, 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 well, okay. in English. What, it, what the root is, I can give you the root. The root yeah. is Allah. Out of that comes Aliyah. Anyone know what Aliyah mm -hmm. is? To go up. To go up. Yes. Even That's, when they get called up to read from yes. the scriptures, they make Aliyah. Right. They, they talk about making Aliyah to Israel mm -hmm. all the time. And I found that amazing. Mm -hmm. The last letter is also the Lamed. Mm -hmm. Because of the... You know, the word has the root, but then it has what's added onto it. And it's talking about to go up. It's actually talking about the time that Cyrus, king of Persia, gave them the right to go back to start rebuilding Jerusalem. Do you know that was prophetically told? Cyrus was named at least 150 years before he was born. Named, called Cyrus in the scriptures. This tickles me pink. Yes. You know, I've got a, a niece slash daughter who's pregnant right now. They're working on names. They don't know what they're going to name the new little one. And they may not know for almost, you know, six more months. She's got time right now. <laughs> but I picture Cyrus's mama. And I picture her with her newborn baby. And I hear the others asking, oh, what's the baby's name? I think I'll call him Cyrus. <laughs> God knew it. God said it. This is the prophetic word of God. And Cyrus was telling the time when they could come back from destruction. They could go back to rebuild the temple. And I thought, wow, how significant is that? That's where the Tanakh ends. And it ends with a word that ends with the Lamed. So it still ends with that letter that we combined with the bait that is speaking about the heart of God. What is the heart of God? For his people to come together, to make all the odds, to come back, to come into the house, the bait that he has made for them, that from the very beginning he wanted that intimate relationship with them. I think it's important to understand too that every whenever you go to Jerusalem from every direction yes. you're always go going up. up. So you're never yes. going down to Jerusalem yeah. from every direction, from north, south, east, west. You're going up yes. to Jerusalem, and which, you know, that's the city where the temple is. And yes. so that's why it says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. All of these things are, are pointing, culminating yes. in Jerusalem. Yes. And going it's up. to go up, to yes. go up. And we're to be, we're, we're, we're all called <clears throat> up to be with him, too. I mean. Amen. And so that's that's part of what God is trying to teach us, is that we're called to be joined together, to go up together. Yes. And that's what worship and dance and music and all of it together is to teach us that we're to join hands 
with the Jew and the Gentile and to go up, you know, even though it is especially to the Jew and, you know, even today God gave me another appointment with a Jew who I hadn't seen in probably 20 years. Um, you know, just, you know, it was a divine appointment. I mean, nothing really happened from it, but it's, it's so fascinating it's always to me that God really wants us to, to join with the Jew. And like uh, Karen said, and you said, and, and, you know, we're supposed to go and find them and walk with them and talk with them and tell them that, you know, Yeshua loves them. You know, and, but sometimes it's, you know, in, in, it's not, you don't have to, you don't have to beat their head against the wall about it, though. If you don't tell love it in love, right. no one wants anything no. forced right. down their throat. Right, right. No one wants to hear, yeah. and if he's a God of love, and you want to represent him, then mm -hmm. you have to be doing it in love. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you can't represent him with a... In a way, it's like, a, he wants us to elevate, you know, to... Elevate. All of us to be elevated, mm -hmm. and um, it brings some memory. You know, like long time ago, I, I have a house in Desert Springs, and a lot of the Jewish people settled in there. And mm -hmm. what I was told was it was it resembles a little bit of Nazareth. That, it's Nazareth, yeah, you know, <laughs> but Israel, you know, and, and, and they go up, you know, also when they go to their. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There used to be, you know, there was a synagogue there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Remember? Yeah. Did we with us? No. I went no. to that synagogue. Yeah. Um, we actually had a messianic congregation. That messianic, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. For a brief time, and now it's just a community center. Oh, that's a shame. I know, oh. but it's what it is. No, it, that's what it is right now. Look at where we are. This I understand oh, was a synagogue. A temple, right? A temple, and we're back. But we're back in a completed picture, and that's what's so beautiful. That's that's the best is that completed picture. I found that when uh, if I'm talking to someone like that, and if I I go with what I want to say and all that is not good. If I but I ask the spirit, lead me into it. Exactly. Give me the you know exactly. should I go on? Should I say yes. this? Or should I yes. not say this? And that's a been a big help for me. Sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. You don't need to have a, a set, I'm going to say this, I'm going to do that. You don't need to be afraid, what am I going to say? You just need to be that conduit that allows the Spirit of God to speak through you. You don't even know what you need to say, but He knows what you need to say. So I encourage you, don't don't shrink back. Step forward. It's a time to love. Um, we ended with Dabarim. We ended up with chapters 33 and 34. Moshe is giving a farewell to Israel. And we're also singing a prophetic speaking of what's going to go on with Israel. And it's very interesting that, and I'll bring this probably in context next week too, that God's crown is king in that chapter. He's referred to as king. And he refers to Israel with the name in Hebrew is Yeshua. And it's spelled with a J in your English, Jeshurun. So um, you had to ask yourself, okay, why that word, Lord? Why didn't you say Israel? Why didn't, you know, why that word? That's a term of endearment. God was calling them by a pet name. And this is at a time when he's saying, you're going to rebel. You're going to go off and do your own thing. You're even going to go into captivity. I'll bring you back. Mm -hmm. But he's telling them like it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives me such hope for my people today. Mm -hmm. And why I tell you, God is never through with the Jew. And mm -hmm. he's not turned his back, and that's why this is happening in Israel. He is weeping over Israel. His heart is still with his people. He's allowing them to suffer consequences that will awaken them and bring them to make all the honor and to go up to him. But he, he calls them by this, this term of endearment. And then he also refers to Israel as Jacob, Yaakov. And we see that at times. We see sometimes in his life that he was given the name Jacob and given the name Israel. And we could say one's flesh and one's spiritual. 
And, and that's pretty much for the most part true. But what I found very interesting is Chabad, our ultra-Orthodox, after all of the services, after Simchat Torah, which was last week, our last one, we've gone Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot for eight days, and Simchat Torah, then they cry out, Ve'yakob halach ladarcho. And Jacob went on his way. Mm -hmm. And what they say, and where I'm going to, I think, bring us for tonight, what they say is we gain all these spiritual treasures. We've amassed all that, the, especially in the last few weeks, spiritually, all that we've taken in, all that we've drunk in, all that we've learned from Bereshit to Dabarim, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, all the way through. We've rolled it back up. We are starting again with our, our days. We know we won't come to high holy days for a whole another year, but we'll look to the next holy day. We'll look to the next holy day. How do we go forward? How do we start reading all over again and it not be the same? Because if you've done it 49 times, the 50th is to be different. Mm -hmm. And so how are they to do that? And here is where they're saying, Jacob, go on your way. Go back into the mundane. Go back into everyday life as it is. No more holidays right now. No more time away from the work. You know, you're back into that routine. But you're going to go in with a new confidence. You're going to go in with a new fortitude. You're going to go in with a new strength. And I thought, I wonder how many facing what they're facing in Israel right now are going back in with that newfound strength and fortitude that they were built up, that they gained in these high holy days before we hit this mm -hmm. last one. As we want it to be different, as we want to go in that strength, as we want to go up, there's only one way to do that, and that is to be right back steady, right back in the Word of God, right back. That's why we roll it back and we start, and we start right away again. We never let it end. We cannot let it end. And this is where I will encourage you. I know too many believers, and I'm not calling anyone out here. You all can, can take or leave. But I know too many who don't open the Word of God, who are not in it daily. And you should be so hungry for the Word of God that if you're not in it, you feel like you've missed a meal. You're starting to starve. You should, by the end of the day, feel so weak. I can't do this, what's wrong? Oh, I need my food. And get back into the Word of God. Here is my challenge for you. You're starting again with us. Some of you haven't been through this, so it is new, but some of you have been through it. Ask God, what do you want to show me this time through these books? Every time I do that, I'm taking to some new, the Shekhinah glory, something, something new that suddenly leaps out all the way through and it brings me to a closer and a deeper walk with my God and it just coincidentally will happen to be what I'm going to need for the trials and the tribulations that I'm going to face and I just stand in awe of that and say God you knew you knew. I didn't have a clue so I want to challenge us, especially if we sit here and we come back, and I really want to because I wasn't even going to get you out of the first sentence. <laughs> and not because I was going to give you what I gave you before, but stay in just the first couple of words. What does the just the very beginning teach us about our God? And it fits with what I've just said of how we roll it back and we bring it together and we see because it teaches us about Jehovah God. It teaches us about the Son of God, and it teaches us about the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Right in the first couple of words and the first couple of verses, and it shows us God's heart is for us to come up. How do we come up? Through the Son. And how does the Son enter into us to bring us up is by the Spirit of God who seals us until the very day we're face to face. That's where we're going to start next week. Right in the very beginning, we're going to see our triune God. We're going to try to comprehend 
But I will tell you, I don't care how smart you are. <laughs> you can be the smartest person on the face of this earth, and you're going to fall short of the infinite mind yes. of the mind. So, no, we'll get a glimpse, we'll get an idea, but as we see how great he is, that's where a war against Hamas can now shrink. And instead of being in fear, I can be anxious for nothing. Because my God, who watches over Israel, neither slumbers nor sleeps. I saw that go across the text today, and I thought, how interesting, because God had put that on my heart to share that tonight. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is our closing to close us off to go into a time of prayer. And I think that's what we should do. We can just mm -hmm. stay right here right yeah. now and just open up to anyone can pray. You can pray a sentence, a word, a paragraph, but we can just <coughs> open it up, and as the Spirit leads you, realize you're praying to the mighty God of creation. You're praying to El Elyon, the most high God, the God of Israel, the one who in the beginning when he gives his names, Elohim is the first name. Elohim is the strong one. Mm -hmm. We have hope. Yes, amen. We have a great opportunity to touch Israel from right here. Let's go. I'll open it, I'll start it, and I guess the Lord bless you. Oh, how privileged we are. Yes. Elohim, high game, our most high God. To run into your throne room, to know that you say you give grace and you give mercy. To know that we are not running in to say, wake up, look what's happening. But we're there to plead. Lord, we're there to stand in the gap. We're there to be like Moshe, <coughs> to cry out for our people. We are there to cry out to El Shaddai, the one who nourishes and nurtures. We're there to cry out to Elohim, the strong one, who does want a relationship with each and every one. Lord God, thank you that you have provided that gift of salvation to every one throughout this world, for God so loved the world. Lord, how we pray right now, may Israel's ear be open to hear the cry of your life, to hear your heart that's crying out, come into my house, come know me personally, come through my son who did shed his blood. Lord, we know blood's been spread all over, it's been spilled all over Israel. It's been spilled literally in lives that have been lost and in hearts that are broken. And Lord, the pain is so great. The fear is so high. The threat is so real. If it were not for our God, we could fear and we could worry. But Lord God, we know that you will not allow Israel to be wiped off the map. We know, Lord God, that you can reverse the evil that is going on, that you can put a stop, that you can put confusion in the camps, that you can break weapons as we read in the scriptures. We know that you have ways far beyond and that I don't need to try to conjure up in my mind. But Lord, we do come before you and fall on our knees and say, we don't deserve it either. But you poured out mercy and grace on us. Pour out mercy and grace on Israel right now. Awaken, O oh Israel. Let her hear, Lord. Let her know her God is on the throne and he is at work and he is working a mighty and a perfect way. Lord, how we pray for those in the land who know you and are trying to share that love right now. Send them to that crying soul that is crying out, where is my God? Let them hear and let them know. Let one more find their way home for an eternal safety in heaven with you, Lord, because of this time. Lord, show us how to help Israel tangibly. Show us how to stand in this gap prayerfully. Show us how to show the difference when we have faith and hope because we have a God who is faithful and who keeps his promises. Lord, may this time that Satan meant for evil may be changed and may there be such good that comes out of it that we will stand in awe 
at the miracle working God. Lord God, you split open a Red Sea. You fed our people miraculously. Even again, Lord, open up miraculously. Provide ways of refuge. Provide food literally. Clothing, the shelter. But Lord, most of all, may they come up to your mountain and know you are their God. Oh Lord, touch us right now. Touch us the apple of your Lord, I pray that this event will open the eyes and the hearts of people who really never really understood anything about Israel. Mm -hmm. And they wonder to the point where they want to dig deeper into it and maybe start their journey yes. to know who yes. Jesus name. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. King of the universe. Father God. We bring our hearts to you. Ask you to protect all the borders. Station your warring angels on all the borders protect Israel show your mighty hand and Father I ask that you would touch Muslims right now many who are coming against Jews who have been Who's been who have been bred in the bone to hate Jews, to, to want the destruction of Israel and every Jew in the face mm. of the planet. Father God, I I just be, I beg you, mm. touch hearts right now. Yes. Open their hearts for a crack so that you can get in, yes. so that they can say, what am I doing? Yes. Just mm. even that, Father God, that they would. The eyes of their understanding would suddenly be opened. Mm. The, the veil would be torn from their hearts, from their minds. Mm. And they would see that they're killing another human being. That no God, whatever you might call it, would want that. Mm. That no God would ask you to destroy innocent lives. Father God, you gave us instructions tonight, Lord, to get back into the Word, to study the Word. And there's keys in, the, in your Word, Father God, that you said, if, when, Take notice. Behold. And Father God, Lord, give us the understanding as we read the word, Lord. Let us not uh, uh, eat it standing up without it really digesting. And Father God, help us to uh, uh, want to give you that time so we can receive your spirit and that revelation from studying your word, Father God. Lord, you, I've been hearing the gates 
I've been hearing the doors. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing the windows, Father God. Mm -hmm. And someone said to me today, well, what is it? I go, it's all of the above. Mm -hmm. He will open up the gates. Yes. He will open up the doors. Yes. He will open up the windows. Yes. He gives us the option. He gives us the many ways to receive his word and to digest his word and to walk in his word and to speak his word and to live his word. And so, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we are going to walk in the way. We're going to be people of the word. We know that you've given that to the Jews, the people of the book. And, and those of us, Lord, that have been grafted in by your divine John 3.16, hallelujah, that, Father God, that we too, Lord, have the heart of the chief. We are the one man, the one new man. Thank you, Father God, that as we even leave this place, Father God, that we're going to hunger for the word. Whenever we hear the word, we're going to stop and take notice. What we don't understand, we're going to ask. And when we still don't understand, we're going to search it out. We're not just going to take it, just you said that we need to do a comparison, we need to investigate so we can get the prophetic meaning from it. And this is the time, this is the time. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that we are not going to be left out because of the end. I said tonight, we need a night now. Father God, we pray for those whose hearts are overwhelmed. Those that are bleeding. Have had a word that has broken them for their hearts into Be the comfort to show yourself strong. Father, we ask you to use us as instruments of your comfort. Show us what to do, show us what to say. Lead and guide us by your spirit that we can learn a measure of peace. Standing with them when they can hardly stand themselves, when the pain is so intense, when they look around and ask, Where where, where do we look for friends? Where do we look for support? Where do we look for those who love and stand with us? Father, show them that. Help us to show that we are the ones who stand with them. We provide what we can of comfort and encouragement. Let us be instruments of your peace in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask whatever is your will. That's the bottom line. We ask your will. Whatever their will, accept completely.
For for the veils to be, to be taken down from their um, eyes, so that they can turn to you and say, Baruch Hashem the Shabbat of the Night. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. When all the nations turn against Israel, and we know that 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 time is coming, Lord. Oh, we pray. be in that war room and give divine wisdom that this can be brought to an end the fastest and with the least loss, especially of innocent life. Yeah. Help the text to be precise because we know that Hamas hides behind babies and school children and hospitals. Those who they are not even allowing to flee right now when Israel has told them to go. Lord, we ask for your blanket to be poured out over these folks, that their lives be spared, that they not suffer because of wicked men who are not listening to you, who are not going to change. But Lord, you are in control. And so we ask, Lord, give Israel great wisdom and ability beyond herself. Lord, we thank you for the miraculous stories of protection that we have her, and we pray for those to be the majority, that is the innocent in the midst of this, the bullets flying and the rockets flying and all that, that goes with that, that they are brought through safely, and may they know it's the hand of God, that through that they might come to salvation. Oh, Lord. We plead for our country to be wise in its decisions also. We plead to follow your will and your way, as has been prayed already tonight. Not our will, not our way. Your will, your ways are higher than your thoughts are greater than ours. Lord, just pour out your hand of mercy yes. and grace. And may we be able to rejoice in the God of our salvation and in the way that you have worked, that it glorify you. Not the enemy, the God of this world who wants this to be his show and who wants to put himself on the throne. But Lord, may this somehow miraculously serve to glorify you. And we thank you and we praise you. You are the rock 
of our salvation. You are our fortress, you are our strong tower, you are our refuge in time of storm. And you are that and more for Israel. So Lord, we rightfully refer into your hands. We rightfully turn our eyes to you, Lord. And we rightfully say, praise you. Praise our God. give you this time, that as we each go out, continue to work in our hearts, in our, our minds, to know what it is that you have each one of us to do. And may we be quick to follow. May we not shrink back in fear. May we not run ahead of you in, in boldness that is our own. But may we go according to the Spirit, led, directed, that we be useful tools in this day. Maybe you brought us to the kingdom for such a time. Thank you. 